Sabina Hassenfelder has a new video on determinism and free will. Hassenfelder believes in determinism and that there is no such thing as free will. It's important to understand that for Hassenfelder, the science proves this. The scientific evidence leaves no room for doubt, no reasonable doubt. It's a scientific fact according to Hassenfelder. Now, I've made several videos pointing out the problems with her position, why these claims are false. The science proves no such thing. Not even close. She doesn't often address these sorts of problems, but some of her followers do. Let's have a look. First, let's listen to what Hassenfelder says about this in her recent video. You all know that I think free will is logically incoherent nonsense. But even if you don't share my opinion, Bell's argument just doesn't work. Now, Hassenfelder is not making a religious or metaphysical claim. She's making a scientific claim. She says the science proves determinism. The entire universe played out is the result of natural laws and only natural laws. That's her version of determinism. And she writes here in an earlier blog. I'll paste the URL down below. In this earlier blog, she writes that uh, these deterministic laws of nature apply to everything, including your brain. And if, if you disagree, if you deny any of this, you're denying scientific evidence. We do not guess, we know. So the language of certainty, again, we do not guess, we know. This, we can derive all this from the laws of science. This comes from science. If you make a claim to the contrary, you are contradicting well-established science. So for Hassenfelder, the science proves determinism, her determinism. And again, if you do not agree, you will never understand how the universe really works. So she's certain of this. This is a truth claim about the world. It's not a claim about the evidence. It's a much bigger claim about the world. She's making a big truth claim. But this truth claim has many problems. I've gone over these before. There are many scientific contradictions. Let's start with this. Determinists claim determinism is true. That claim is itself self-contradictory and delusional. Now, when I say delusional, I'm not using this in a pejorative sense. I just am using this word as it's meant to be used. If determinism is true, then there's no way that anyone could know that it is true. You see the difference? Hassenfelder is claiming to know that determinism is true. That is self-contradictory. Another problem is that this determinism entails evolution. In other words, if this determinism is true, then evolution must be true. But evolution is scientifically problematic. There are all kinds of problems with the theory of evolution. Another problem is that we experience free will, something that Hassenfelder um, admits and says, yes, that's true, but it's just an illusion. But nonetheless, we do have a large amount of evidence of the, the experience of free will. And then another problem is that science does not explain many things anyway. Um, if this determinism is true, then everything must be explainable by natural laws. Now, let's, let's dive into that one a little bit more. That's, this problem leads to more problems. Um, and that is that determinism states that everything arose by natural law. So what are we getting at here? Let's look at these two columns, natural law and everything. Natural law creates everything. In the natural law column, we have things like gravity, uh, physics, quantum mechanics, um, electrostatics, thermodynamics, etc. These natural laws are very simple. Now in the everything column we have things like insects and birds and music and literature and well everything, everything in the universe. So these natural laws must have created everything in the universe. There's a big mismatch here. The natural laws are very simple. Uh, gravity for example. You have two masses that are attracted to each other. Electrostatics you have two charges that are attracted or repelled. These are very simple natural laws. They, there's no scientific reason, no scientific evidence to believe that they could create uh, Shakespearean um, literature, for example. There's no scientific reason to believe that these natural laws, these simple natural laws, could create all the complexity of the world, such as Shakespearean sonnets. And so this is not a scientific idea. It's not motivated by science. Determinism states that everything arose by natural law. It's not science. Now, I have presented some of these uh, questions to readers of my blog, 
And here's an, I want to show you a couple of examples and what they say. So here's one fellow who came onto the blog. We had some comments, so I asked him. So you believe that gravity, entropy, electrostatics, quantum mechanics, and the other natural laws wrote a Shakespearean sonnet? In fact, all the sonnets and everything else in the universe as well, because that's what they are saying. And they're not just hypothesizing this. They're saying that it is true. And that's, that's the crux of the issue here. It's not simply a hypothesis that they're uh, examining. It's a claim. It's a truth claim that this is true. So I, asked, I put this to one of the readers, and uh, his response was telling. Yes, I do believe this, because all of the phenomena and characteristics of the universe, from Red Giants to Shakespeare, are all a result of the natural unfolding of the universe. Shakespeare's genius and his things that he produced were not born of free will, but was inherited from billions of years of birth and death of stars, evolution, mutation, gene shift, meiosis, and more, obviously. Okay, now here's another reader, similar um, question I put to him about, do you really believe that natural laws wrote the Shakespearean sonnets and so forth, and that this is true? And the response again, yes, of course, I believe that natural laws wrote the Shakespearean sonnets. Do you believe they were somehow written outside of those laws? If you believe that they were created somehow outside and in violation of well-established natural laws, then I, together with everyone else, would very much like to see your evidence for that. Okay, I want to look at that, evidence, that, that uh, response there a little bit. This is the fallacy of shifting the burden of proof. It was perfected by Charles Darwin 160 years ago. He used that sort of an argument here in chapter 6, for example, of his book on uh, the origin of species. He's grappling with the idea that, gee, could chance biological variation really create the eye and other complex structures such as the eye in biology? And he caveats his uh, discussion. He admits this seems pretty far out there, but he makes a series of arguments for why it would be true. And, and here's one of them. If it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed, which could not possibly have been formed by numerous successive slight modifications, my theory would absolutely break down, but I can find no such case. Now, look at this argument here. What he's doing is shifting the burden of proof. If it could be demonstrated, gee, if you can falsify my idea, then, well, my theory would absolutely break down. It sounds generous of Darwin, doesn't it? But it actually isn't so generous when you look at it because what his, he is requiring is a falsification of his theory. It's impossible to falsify according to these criteria. You would have to prove that the eye or some other complex structure could not possibly have been formed by numerous successive slight modifications to the evolutionist's satisfaction. How are you going to prove that? So here you have a, an idea that is very unlikely. It's not scientifically motivated. There's no reason to think that chance uh, random biological variation would create such complex structures, finely tuned complex structures. It's not scientifically motivated, but how would you um, falsify it? So evolutionists feel free to propose unlikely events and then claim that they are true because they haven't been falsified. This is the fallacy of shifting the burden of proof. So back to our problem, you have simple natural laws that are supposed to have created everything. Now, natural law has not created poetry experimentally. It has not been shown to be able to do that in laboratory. Natural law has not created poetry computationally. It has not been shown to be able to do that even in a computer simulation, for example. Natural law has not created poetry theoretically. There is no compelling, obvious theory of how this would happen. So this idea from determinism that natural law created everything, including the Shakespearean sonnets, doesn't come from science. It isn't scientifically motivated. There's no good scientific reason to believe that this could or would or did happen. In fact, it's a stretch. This doesn't seem likely. It seems like a very unlikely event. And yet we have the shifting of the burden of proof. You need to show that it's not possible. What's your explanation? Well, first, we need to agree that determinism is not a fact. It is not scientifically compelling. This idea that natural law created everything is a stretch. It's unlikely. It is a heroic idea. 
If we cannot agree with that simple scientific observation, then there's no use in engaging in further discussion. Religion drives science, and it matters. Thank you.